In this video, we're going to be learning about linear relations. This video will be helpful to the students that want to learn about math and also do some research on programming as well. We will first go over all the math basics needed to learn this topic. Then at the end of this video, we're going to be enhancing our knowledge with programming inside of Python. So just before we proceed into learning about linear relations, let's first watch this video clip about linear patterns. After watching this clip, are you able to think of the linear equation for this pattern? So throughout this video, we're going to be covering the following topics. We will first go over what a linear equation is. Second, we'll go over what slopes are. Third, we'll look at what constants are. Fourth, we're going to be solving a linear relations problem. And finally, fifth, we're going to be going over our Python code for plotting linear equations. But just before we get into the video, are you able to solve this problem shown on the screen? So just before we get into solving this problem, we're going to first go over all the basics need to learn this linear equations topic. Then at the end of this video, we're going to be solving this problem as well. So let's get started with what a linear equation is. So a linear equation is an equation in which the highest power of a variable is always 1. And the simplest form of a linear equation is y equals to x. And there's nothing really special about this linear equation, it's just that y is equal to x and x is equal to y. And also, inside of the linear equation y equals to x, if we were to graph it, the line would directly pass through 0, 0, and it would in fact be a straight line. And if we were to plot the points inside of a table, every single point would be the same because y equals to x. So if we had 1 for y, then we would have 1 for x. If we had negative 10 for y, then we have negative 10 for x. So every single point would be the same for y and x as well. And I'll also be showing you guys this plot inside of coding in Python at the end of this video. But now moving on from y equals to x, linear equations can get way more complicated. We can also have a coefficient and also a constant as well. So instead of just y equals to x, we might have y equals to mx or even y equals to mx plus c. And here m and c can be any value. So now we're going to be talking about what a slope is. So there are four different types of slopes that we're going to be covering today. One is the positive slope, one is the increasing slope, one is the decreasing slope, and one is the negative slope. So let's start off with the increasing slope. So a slope always increases when the variable m gets bigger. So inside of the equation y equals to mx, when m gets bigger, then the slope will also get bigger and it will move towards the y-axis. So for example, if we just had y equals to x, then it would be a straight line through 0, 0. But if we had y equals to 2x, then the line would start going up and closer and closer to the y-axis while still passing through 0, 0. So even though it doesn't change, it still goes to 0, 0, it's just that the line shifts upwards. So that's what it is for an increasing slope. So a decreasing slope is a slope when the variable m gets smaller. So in this case, we're going to need to go into fractions or even decimals. So for example, if we had y equals to 1 divided by 4x, then the line would start going down and closer and closer to the x-axis while still passing through 0, 0. So just like the increasing slope, it still passes through 0, 0, except it shifts downwards towards the x-axis instead of shifting upwards to the y-axis. So now let's talk about negative slopes. So a negative slope is basically just the opposite of a positive slope. So a positive slope is every single example we've seen so far. So it usually goes the normal way that we see our lines. And basically, a negative slope is just the opposite of that. So in this case, we're just going to be plotting the line backwards. So for example, if we had y equals to x, as we already know, it would just pass through 0, 0 in a straight line. But if we had y equals to negative x, then the line would still pass through 0, 0. It would just look backwards. And this is the same thing with y equals to negative 2x and y equals to negative 1 divided by 4x, and so on. So in a positive slope, so no positive slope is just the ones that we see all the time, and the negative slope is just the backwards one. So that's basically it for all the slopes. So now we're going to be moving on to linear equation with constants. So the standard form of linear equations is y equals to mx plus c. And when we start adding constants, then things get a little trickier. 
So whenever we want to add any constant, all we need to do is move our line basically either up or down on the y-axis depending on what it is, what the constant is. So if the constant is a plus 3, then we'd go up 3 on our y-axis, and if the constant is a minus 3, then we'd go down minus 3 on our axis. So based on what the constant is, we either go up or down. Our line goes up or down on the y-axis. So if we had negative 6, then we just go make our line go all the way down to negative 6. And if we had plus 6, then we just go all the way up 6 on our y-axis. And this would happen with any single constant. It doesn't really matter. And it also work with negative slopes as well. So now that we have a little bit of understanding of what linear equations are, now we're going to be solving the problem for the beginning of our video. So here we can see that there are four figures. And so what we need to do first is, we first have to find the pattern. So and based on all of these figures, what does it increase by each time? And we can see that it increases by 3 each time. So now since we found the pattern, it's the best to create a table for this. So to create a table, we first need to fill out all our values inside of the table. So if we look at our figures, we can see that it goes up by 1. So we go to figure 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. So for our y, we're going to put figure number comma y, and then we're just going to put 1, 2, 3, and 4 inside of the table. And next, we need to fill in the x part of the table as well. So the x will just be the amount of shown inside of each figure. So in figure 1, we have 1 cube. In figure 2, we have 4 cubes. In figure 3, we have 7 cubes. And in figure 4, we have 10 cubes. So we're just going to be also putting that inside of the table as well. So now if we want to create a linear equation, we're also going to need to find out the slope of this to get our linear equation. And slope is a very easy way to find out a linear equation based on these type of patterns that are given. So to find the slope, the formula is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And people also like to call this rise over run or delta y over delta x. So now since we know the formula for finding slope, now let's actually find the slope. So now we have to fill in all of our values. So to find the slope, we first need to put our first two points. And we already know that our first two points are 1, 1 and 2, 4. So we're going to fill in those values inside of the slope formula. So we're just going to put m is equal to 4 minus 1 divided by 2 minus 1. And we get 4 minus 1 because it's y2 minus y1 and we get 2 minus 1 because it's x2 minus x1. So now if we simplify our equation, we just do 4 minus 1, which is 3, divided by 2 minus 1, which is 1. So m is equal to 3, because 3 divided by 1 is 3. So here we already found our m, which is basically our coefficient as well. So now our equation looks like this. y equals to 3x plus c, instead of y equals to mx plus c. So all we need to do to complete this equation is to fill in our constant. So to find c, we first need to satisfy each single row. So to do this, we can take our 3x now. So if we do 3 times 1, then we get 3. So to satisfy our first row, all we need to do to get 1 is minus 2. So our equation for the first row is 3x minus 2. So if we do 3 times 1, which is 3 minus 2 equals to 1. So now since we found one point, we need to just confirm that it works for every single point. So if we do 3 times 2, then we get 6 minus 2 equals to 4. So that one's also right. So now let's do 3 times 3, which is 9, minus 2 equals to 7, and 4 times 3, which is 12, minus 2 equals to 10. And now since we confirmed every single point, we finish the problem. So that's basically it for the beginning part of our video, and now we're going to be moving on with our Python code. So for our Python code today, we're going to be plotting linear equations using matplotlib. So I already have all the code here, and I'm just going to be explaining what each line does, and then we're going to be running our program to actually plot our, our linear equations. So I'm going to start explaining what each line of code does here. So let's start off with the top. So first we're going to be importing two libraries, which will help us for our plotting our linear equations and our graphs. So we're first going to be importing matplotlib, and we're also going to be importing numpy. So these two libraries will help us with our programs later on. And then second here, we're just going to be adding a title for our grid, and we're just going to be doing plotting linear equations. And then we're going to be adding an x and y label, and we're just going to be putting the x label as x-axis and the y label as y-axis. And then here, we're, doing, we're going to be setting a variable called x and y, and we're going to be arranging this. And this is just for our graph here. So we're going to do np.arrange, 
in brackets, negative 3, comma 3. And this will just help us for our graph later on. So basically in our graph we're gonna have um, we're gonna have spaces between in the x and y. So in the x we're gonna have spaces between 3 and negative 3, and in the y we're gonna have spaces between 3 and negative 3. And this won't impact our actual plot. So there's no need to worry about this. We're gonna be plotting over here. So we can just leave this for just our graph. And now we're gonna be moving down here. So here's where we actually plot our coordinates. And for right now, we're just gonna be plotting two, which is y equals to x and y equals to negative x. So to plot y equals to x, all we'd have to do is y comma x. And then also to plot y equals to negative x, all we do is y comma negative x. So this should plot two lines at the same time. And then we're just gonna be defining the color for these as red. And also we're gonna put the line style as solid. So it's easier to see. We can also change one of these colors to make them stand out. So this one basically plots uh, y equals to negative x and this plots y equals to x. And then here we're doing our a simple code that helps us to make our boxes equal lengths. So inside of our grid, every single box will be the same length. And then finally, we're gonna be plotting and showing our grid. So that's all the code that we have here. And now let's run this to see how y equals to x and y equals to negative x looks like. So let's just run this right now. And it might take some time to open depending on how many plots you have. So yeah. And there it is. So as you can see here, we have two lines. One is a blue line and one is a red line. And one of them is y equals to x and y of them, one of them is equal to y equals to negative x. So if you remember from the beginning of this video, y equals to x goes through 0, 0. So we can see 0 is here and 0 is here. So it is passing through 0, 0. And it's a complete straight line. And if we have x equals to 2, so if we go to 2, then y should also be equal to 2. And that's right as well. If we have x equals to negative 2, then we should have y equals to negative 2 as well. So it looks like this plot worked here. And now let's look at y equals to negative x. So we can already see that this is true because it's just the opposite. It's just flipped around. And yeah, it also passes through the same points as well. So we can see that this plot worked perfectly. So now let's add some coefficients to our so now here I've added some coefficients to both of our plots here. And the first one is just y equals to 2x. And the second one is y equals to a negative 2x. So this should just plot something different. So as we remember from the beginning of this video once again, then if we have a, um, if we have a coefficient here, then the slope will start going upwards. So for the 2x, y equals to 2x, this should be going instead of, it'll still pass to 0, 0, but it's going to come closer and closer to the y-axis. And same thing for the negative 2x. It's still going to come closer and closer to the y as well. So now let's run this to see how this plot looks like. And also feel free to experiment with any number. And we're also going to be doing one more after this, after I show you guys this one. So here we have our next two plots here. So the red one is equal to y equals to 2x. So we can see that it still passes through 0, 0 and y equals to 2x, it's coming closer and closer to the y-axis here. You can see that if it was just y equals to x, then it would just go like, it'll be something like this. And since this is y equals to 2x, it's a little bit shifted towards the y-axis. And for y equals to negative 2x, it's the same thing except it's just flipped around, and it's also coming closer and closer to the y-axis as well. So this is basically how it looks like with adding a coefficient to our plot here. And now we're going to be adding a constant as well. So all we need to do to add a constant is just put plus any number. So we can do plus three maybe on both sides. Or we can also change this here too. Basically the three is the intercept. So it'll just go up by plus three on both lines. And I'll show you this right now. So let's just run this. So here we can see that if we look at 0, 0, it's not there. But if we go to 0, 3 on the y-axis, we can see that it is there. And this is because we just intercepted it by 3, so it went up by 3. And this is basically the same plot as before, except we just moved it upwards for both of them three times. And just one more code that I wanted to show you today before leaving. 1 divided by 4 times x and also negative one divided by four times x as well. Since we have a decimal value now, this should be coming closer and closer to our x-axis instead of our y-axis. So if we look, if we remember from our 
slope one when we increased it by two, then it went closer and closer to our y-axis, but now it should be coming closer and closer to our x-axis. So now let's just run this to see how this one works. And there we go. We can see that it is still passing through zero, zero, and it's coming closer and moving up and up to our x-axis here. And that's basically it for our code. That's all I wanted to show you guys. And you can also import as many um, lines as you want. You can just copy and paste this and just keep on like pasting it. And you can just change the colors to not get yourself confused. And you can change any of this. You can make any linear equation really. That's basically it for our video of linear equations and linear relations. If you guys ended up enjoying this video, please drop a like and subscribe because it really does take a lot of time to create these videos. So thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.